Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, for those of you who've been hanging out on this channel for a while now, you know we went through a very tumultuous legislative session, and the biggest piece of legislation to pass was Senate Bill 5078, or what is now called a high-capacity magazine ban. Now, that has many of us scrambling, trying to figure out what does this law really mean to us, and we've done several videos since the passage of this law that should better explain that. We'll put the links for those down below. But today we're going to go into some high-level geek stuff when it comes to legal stuff. And today we're going to spend a few minutes talking about the one case that could overturn magazine bans. Okay, before we get rolling, you guys know the drill. If you like this video, go ahead and click that like button if you want to stay up to date on issues related to your Second Amendment rights, especially with this magazine legislation. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. Click the little bell logo if you want to be notified when we post new videos. And most importantly, let's keep the comments and discussions coming. That's how we're going to make sure we're getting our videos out to more lawful and responsible gun owners like yourself. Okay, we don't often get to talk about large pieces of national litigation matters getting before the United States Supreme Court, but today is an exception and we do need to talk about something because it could significantly affect your Second Amendment rights and it could have a significant impact on some of the new legislation recently passed in Washington. So today we're going to talk about the case of Duncan v. Bonta. Now, for those of you who have been tracking this case for a while, it used to be called Duncan v. Becerra, but as we know, uh, Javier Becerra, the California Attorney General, was appointed to the Biden administration and replaced by Mr. Bonta, and so now the case has a new caption of Duncan v. Bonta. Just a couple of weeks ago, both the NRA, National Rifle Association, as well as the California Rifle and Pistol Association, filed for a writ of certiorari to the United States Supreme Court for them to review California's uh, Penal Code 32310. What is California Penal Code 32310? Well, that's California's magazine ban, and they too have a ban on all magazines possessing more than 10 rounds. But unlike the state of Washington, which right now is only restricting the commercial sale of high-capacity magazines, the state of California also prohibits the possession and use of them, and that law was did not provide for a grandfathering clause. Therefore, in one swoop of the pen, many citizens lost property that they could no longer lawfully possess without any just compensation from the government. Now, this case has a long, sordid history to it. Starting as Duncan v. Becerra, it started with a suit filed by Duncan and the NRA against the state of California in 2017. In 2019, Duncan prevailed in front of a San Diego judge who, in, who issued an injunction against the state of California from enforcing the magazine ban. Now, of course, the state of California completely flipped out and appealed it to the Ninth Circuit of the Federal uh, Appellate Courts. Now, for those of you who know anything about the Ninth Circuit, you will know that there is no circuit in America that's more liberal than the Ninth Circuit. And for those of you who know anything about the Ninth Circuit, you will also know that there is no circuit that is more anti-Second Amendment than the Ninth Circuit. So this is not friendly territory. However, in 2020, before a three-judge panel, the injunction was upheld by the Ninth Circuit. This led to a big, big thing known as Freedom Week, where folks in California got to live like free Americans for a brief period of time and accumulate some of these high-capacity, or what many of us call standard-capacity magazines. Well, of course, the state of California couldn't rust with that, so they appealed to the full panel of the Ninth Circuit District Court. That uh, review was accepted, and right then and there, all of us could see the writing on the wall on where this was going. The case was heard in late 2021 before the entire panel of the Ninth Circuit. And to nobody's surprise, the injunction was overturned and California's magazine ban was reinstated. This has now led to the NRA and the California organization filing for a petition of certiorari to the United States Supreme Court to have this issue heard. Now, a writ of certiorari is a fancy terminology for 
asking the Supreme Court for the opportunity to argue in front of them. The Supreme Court gets to select what cases it hears. In fact, probably in a given year, maybe one out of every 30, one out of every 50 cases that are petitioned to the United States Supreme Court are actually accepted for review. But listen, this case has far-reaching implications, and currently the United States Supreme Court has demonstrated a willingness to listen to Second Amendment cases, which it has not done for approximately 13 years now. Now, as we know, the New York Pistol and Rifle Association v. Bruin was argued last session, and we are expecting a ruling at any moment. And that decision has the effect of overturning California, New York, Maryland, Washington, D.C., Hawaii, and several other states' concealed carry laws that are on a May-issue basis and will force them to become a shall-issue basis similar to what Washington State is. The important issue, though, to be decided in Duncan v. Bonta is not so much whether or not magazine restrictions are constitutional. That will clearly be decided. But the big issue is what is the rule moving forward any other time a court is asked to analyze the constitutionality of a firearms restriction? You see, the big issue, and it is one of the three questions presented, but I believe the big issue for all of us moving forward is the issue of what standard of review does an appellate court need to utilize when determining the constitutionality of firearms legislation? Under the Heller decision, the last time the Supreme Court uh, ruled on anything substantive to the Second Amendment, the Sc SCOTUS made it very clear that a strict scrutiny standard was to what's to be utilized. However, what we have seen time and time again from lower courts, especially from the Ninth Circuit, is an application of a much lower standard of intermediate scrutiny. In fact, counsel for Mr. Duncan I think, has expressed it best when he wrote in the opening memorandum the following. In District of Columbia v. Heller, this court held that the Second Amendment protects arms that are typically possessed by law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes. Yet California prohibits the possession of firearm magazines capable of holding more than 10 rounds of ammunition, even though these magazines are widely owned and standard issued for handguns and long guns typically owned for self-defense. But then in being critical for what the Ninth Circuit has done, the petitioner states, In doing so, moreover, the en banc panel made clear that the Ninth Circuit will continue to apply a heightened and name-only form of scrutiny in the Second Amendment context unless and until the Supreme Court tells it otherwise. And what counsel is complaining about here is, listen, when an intermediate scrutiny analysis is used, you can justify just about every form of gun control. Now, what are we talking about here? Let's break this down for just every average person to understand. What is an intermediate versus strict scrutiny standard? Okay, a strict scrutiny standard is essentially, I'm going to look at the plain language of what's written right there on paper, in this case by our founding fathers. I'm going to give those words their plain meaning, and that's going to be how I interpret this uh, constitutional amendment. A more thorough or proper definition of strict scrutiny would read, strict scrutiny is a form of judicial review that the courts use to determine the constitutionality of certain laws. Strict scrutiny is often used by courts when the plaintiff sues the government for discrimination or infringement upon other rights. To pass strict scrutiny, the legislature must have passed the law to further a compelling governmental interest and must have narrowly tailored the law to achieve that interest. Strict scrutiny is the highest standard of review which a court will use to evaluate the constitutionality of governmental discrimination. The other two standards are intermediate scrutiny and rational basis review. And what Justice Scalia said in Heller, and I thought he made it very clear, is that when we are analyzing the constitutionality of infringements upon our Second Amendment rights, we are to use a strict scrutiny analysis. Why is that important? Well, you can see from both the regular plain language definition I gave you, as well as the legal definition, that passing constitutional muster for firearm restrictions under strict scrutiny analysis is very difficult. However, when we apply an intermediate scrutiny analysis, 
Well, things become much more fungible, they become much more moldable, and they become much more easily to fit within somebody's political ideals. And the real reason that this is such an enigmatic standard that allows the bench that may have a legislative agenda of their own to craft case law consistent with that legislative agenda is that we then force the courts into a balancing test where we're going to take a look at, well, I know there's an infringement upon an individual right, but there's such a great society need that perhaps the need of the society outweighs the want of the individual. In fact, intermediate scrutiny is more clearly defined as intermediate scrutiny is a test courts will use to determine the statute's constitutionality. Intermediate scrutiny is only invoked when a state or federal government passes a statute which negatively affects certain protected classes. To pass intermediate scrutiny, the challenged law must, one, further an important government interest, and two, must do so by means that are substantially related to that interest. And obviously, as the name applies, intermediate scrutiny is a far less rigorous form of scrutiny than strict scrutiny. So once again, the case is Duncan v. Bonta, and it is a case that all of us, all of us need to carefully watch. Now listen, while I would hope that the United States Supreme Court comes out and clearly and definitively once and for all defines our Second Amendment rights like they could do in New York Pistol and Rifle Association v. Bruin, I don't think the court is going to take that opportunity. But if this case, Duncan v. Bonta, can be accepted for review before the current makeup of this Supreme Court with a 6-3 conservative majority, even in worst case scenario of 5-4 because Justice Roberts, yes, has proven to be a bit of a swing vote, this is the time to have these types of cases before that court. So the bottom line is, is not only does this case have the right to restore many of our Second Amendment rights, but this case also has the ability to clearly and once and for all delineate the rules that all appellate courts, regardless of their political leaning, must use in determining the constitutionality of a firearm restriction. Listen, you may have more questions about this case or anything else related to your Second Amendment rights, and if you do, don't ever hesitate to contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com, or of course, you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now let's remember, part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.